And what's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of the Talkin' NASCAR podcast. This is Talkin' NASCAR podcast, episode number 89. We are back. Uh, after our two-week hiatus, we are back, and we are here until the end of the season now. So, guarantee that. Um, hopefully, hopefully you can guarantee that. I guess I can't be too sure, but we're going to try. Yeah, it's it's pretty insane. And we and with the two week break, we have a lot to talk about. But it's not just because of the two week break. Um Richmond happened. Um the truck series playoffs has been set as well. I don't know if we're going to go through the full truck series playoff grid. They do have an off week this next week, so we might wait till next week. Uh but we gotta talk about that. We gotta talk about the insane cup race. Well, the insane finish to the cup race. Um I visited another short track. Um, we might talk about that. I finally got around to watching a uh, NAS- new NASCAR movie for me, Days of Thunder. Uh, so we might talk about that. Um, and I also played a, a NASCAR game that was new for me. So I want got notes on that we can possibly talk about in this episode. Plus a bunch of other stuff, including silly season stuff and whatnot. And then, of course, at the end... We are previewing our home track race. Michigan is coming up, so we are very excited about that. But first, let's talk about Richmond. Uh, first for the truck race. I didn't get to watch the truck race because I was at the short track race that I might talk about. Might talk about next episode. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, I thought the race was pretty good from what I saw in the uh, highlights. Um, a lot of different grooves a lot of good passing some really good fights for the lead especially on restarts Um, a lot of contenders coming and going throughout the evening Um, it was pretty tame um, until stage two matt crafton spun out in the second stage but otherwise it wasn't too crazy the big one did strike in stage three though um, which took out a bunch of drivers um, in the third turn then it got calmed down after that nice battle for the lead until connor zillich wrecked with uh, about 15 to go to set up a last uh, restart, Um, and it was a dogfight for the win, but um, uh, some really good battles all throughout. But in the end, Ty Majeski would overcome a pit road penalty. He had a loose wheel penalty on pit road earlier in the race, sent him to the back of the field, but he was able to drive all the way back up through the field as he's done many times before in his career and was able to score his second straight win in the truck series. So a good way for him to end off the regular season with back-to-back wins. Um, and yeah, the Truck Series playoffs are set for the first time ever in the history of the Truck Series playoffs. A driver got in on points. I'll let you take that one in for a little bit. The driver who got in on points was Daniel Dye. Took the last spot. Barely knocking Tanner Gray out. Both drivers had a really good night. Um, but... Tanner Gray needed a strong, needed pretty much needed to win at that point because of how good Daniel Dye was running, but it wasn't meant to be. Uh, Daniel Dye is in um, as the tenth and final driver. So, so that was the Truck Series race. Um, again, we'll get to the playoff grid a little bit later. Um, but then the Cup race. Let me simulate the first like 398 laps of this Cup Series race. <sighs> Oh, Martin Trucks Jr. blowing engine. Yeah. That was it. The only two notable things to talk about before the ending of the race. Um, number one, obviously, Martin Trucks Jr. blew up, blew a motor um, midway through the race when he was running in the top ten. He's still pretty good on points. Um, but obviously not what they wanted. There's also been a lot of controversy over the JGR engines over the last few weeks, and this did not help that case at all. So it's going to be interesting to see what goes on from that. But Truex was actually the only driver to not finish the race. Um, 37 drivers started and 36 finished, which is pretty impressive nowadays. So um, there you go. But then the other thing to talk about before we get to the ending of the race was the new option tires that were implemented uh, for this race, um, the option tires, in my opinion, 
were good, but I think it did contribute to a, an extremely boring race. Drivers did not want to race at all. They were just riding around the track, waiting until the next pit stop. Tire strategy, they were just being way too conservative with their tires. And it caused a what would have been caution-free race up until the very end because the only cautions until the like two to go was the stage cautions. And they did not help with the excitement at all. God, it was so fucking boring. Nobody wanted to do anything. And I'm just like, come on, people, race. Even when they put on the new option tires. I did like the new option tires, by the way. Um, I think they did add uh, an extra piece of strategy. And a lot of drivers, including the big one, was Daniel Suarez, who helped him win a stage and tried to almost hope to help them win the race um, had it not been for that late yellow that would have uh, probably put him in the top five or even gotten the win. So... I definitely think it's something to try out. Um, I think a lot of people are looking at Martinsville to be the next track that tries this, and I definitely would like to see that at Martinsville. I don't know how well it would work, but, um, you know, I was, I was, the, I was, well, after, I didn't, so I didn't watch the truck series highlights until the day after the cup race. So I hadn't seen what that race was like, but watching the cup race, I went from advocating for Richmond to go down to one date to getting Richmond off the schedule entirely because this track has been so bad with the next-gen car. It's not even funny. Martinsville, yes. Martinsville has gotten downgraded. Yes, Bristol's been downgraded. But Richmond has taken the hardest hit out of any of the tracks on the schedule, period. good you know good enough to be you know having two dates but like now it's just what's the point yeah for like oh i get it i get it i i i yeah i don't i don't know um it's gonna be interesting to see what they do I just realized you don't have any audio, Gary. I got it fixed, but I just realized you didn't have any audio till now. So there we go. Um, now that everyone can hear me, I'm here. <laughs> um, should keep that in. Keep that in. <laughs> oh, wait. Well, we're not we're not restarting. Uh, so there, there we go. Get me in. But you didn't say you didn't say much anyway, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> Jesus the Christ. only other thing that I can really talk about from the first 398 laps, uh, Christopher Bell had a really good race going until he got a pit road speeding penalty. Um, Eric Jones spun out in the pits, also at the hand of Christopher Bell, funny enough. I'm but, surprised Kyle Busch didn't And spin. then we need to talk about, I do want to talk about Austin Dillon's first 398 laps. Because this was probably the best race, of not just of his season, but possibly of his career. He was running with on speed, contending with the front runners for the championship, um, and it was really, really impressive to see, especially with the lack of cautions, keeping the car on the lead lap, and keeping it in contention to win. And he had the race won, fair and square. He had the race won till two laps to go, and guess who decided to fuck it up? Our friend Recky Spinhouse. Oh. Ricky Spenhouse Jr. Uh oh, Ricky Spenhouse. And they caught it right on. It was right in front of Austin Dillon, too. He's on the lead lap, and he dives into turn one a little hot for no reason whatsoever and absolutely pile drives through Ryan Priest, wrecking both cars in the process. And that's... We get an overtime finish. Oh boy, let's talk about this overtime finish. First off, um, Austin Dillon gets the lead out of the pits. Pit crew does an amazing job in the pits. We're set up for a really good restart. The announcers, and probably every fan in the stands, as well as on TV, was ask, was telling Austin Dillon, you have to take the high line on the restart. Because the High Line was going to get the good drive off of turn two and was going to allow him to have clean air throughout the rest of the final two laps. But his dumbass decides to pick the bottom. 
and I was shaking my head when I saw this happen, because I thought he had just lost the race with picking the inside. Joey Logano's on his outside. The restart happens. They tell Dylan to, you know, go as early as possible. He waits until the, like, two, the second to last point possible to restart. So Logano gets the jump on him. And lo and behold, Logano clears him on the outside. Everybody saw that coming. I'm like, okay, Joey Logano is going to win the race. And this is going to really suck because this is going to be two races now that this season that he has walked straight into a win because of some bullshit cautions. Um, so that's awesome. That's that's p- t- typical Joey Logano luck. We go into the final turn. Dylan's the second. I'm like, okay, Dylan's going to get second. You know, it's still a really good run. Dylan didn't want second. He wanted that win, and he was going to get it however he needed to. So he's a good three car lengths back of Joey Logano, and he decides, I'm going to pull a Ross Chastain and just absolutely send it into turn three. He gets there, bumps into Logano. Logano spins the fuck out, but he wasn't done there. Here comes Denny Hamlin on the inside, now ready to take the win because Dylan slowed down. Nope, Dylan says, fuck you, I'm in a video game, T- cuts it dead left, right hooks Denny Hamlin straight into the wall, and Dylan wins the race. My jaw was on the floor when this happened. People don't like it, and I bet you right now some Joey Logano fans, a.k.a. and and some fans, which are very rare, um, they are probably angry at Austin Dillon right now, which you can be angry at him, but, but just remember, Joe Legano and Diddy Hamlin have done this before. Mm-hmm. They have. Look at, look, at, have. Look, at Can- look at Kansas when it was Matt Kenseth and him, and look at Diddy Hamlin versus Kyle Larson. Three times. Look at Denny Hamlin versus Ross Chastain. So, for Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano to say, oh, this is bullcrap, this is bullcrap, you guys do the same thing. And it was fair when you guys did it. So why is it not fair for me? I don't condone it. I don't condone what Austin Dillon did. I mean, I, I don't condone extremely it. reckless driving. But you're right. They're being hypocritical when they get mad because they've done the same thing before. I would be, I would feel more sympathy for them if both of them already weren't in the playoffs because they both have wins. For Logano specifically, this is karma for him backing into that Nashville win. So there you go. That's eye for an eye. There you go. Uh, and you know, it would have been okay. It would have been okay for Logano and Austin Dillon if Logano just, or if Austin Dillon just bumped him and gave him a little tap and got him near the wall just a tiny bit and then passed him. But then again, he was so far away, he just should have took second and should have just got what he got. And maybe he could come at Michigan and win, even though that would be possibility or not, but... You're right. I don't know. I mean... They interviewed Logano first after the race. Well, Logano was the most pissed. Let's just be real here. Logano was definitely the most pissed. He pulls his car. I don't blame him. He pulls his car into the pit, stops by Austin Dillon's pit box, and um, revs his engine, um, which the officials were not happy about. They got into Logano's face and yelled at him. Then they interviewed him. Logano called it a chicken shit move. It was completely bullshit. All this stuff, and he's just going off and off and off. They interviewed, but um, Denny Hamlin was a little more cool-tempered, and Denny Hamlin said something that I think is the real catalyst for this happening. The real catalyst for why Austin Dillon did that is because of the playoff system. You have to win to get in, and Dillon, there is no way in hell Dillon wins at Michigan. There's no way in hell Dillon wins at Darlington. He could win Daytona, but that's a crapshoot. You can't bank on that. He has a chance to win a race right now, and he's going to take it. That's the playoff system, and that's why that's why he did that. NASCAR wanted this to happen. This is why this is what NASCAR wanted. They can say whatever they want. This is what exactly what they wanted to happen. Drivers going for it all in the last turn of the last lap for an exciting finish. So that you know, for the sake of 
going into the playoffs. Dylan was 32nd in the points going into this night. He jumped. He is now locked into the playoffs and guaranteed at least 16th. At least 16th. That is... And most likely is not going to make it past the first round. I don't think... He, he probably won't unless he walks his way into another win, but... I mean, we've got a super speedway in the first round in Atlanta, so it's like, you know, it could happen. But, you know, anyway. So, Denny Hamlin was right. And I, I it's because of the playoff system that this happened. And I don't condone it, but um, now, and there's been a whole thing about, oh, is he going to get penalized? Is there going to be a penalty? Is there going to be, you know. Here's the thing. <sighs> Whether or not you can't take away a win, they're not unless they're, it's they're not going to take away the win. Dylan jumped six spots in the regular point standings as well, so there's no way they can dock him enough points to get him below 35th, which would which means he's pretty much he's in the playoffs, he's in the playoffs regardless now because there's only three more races and three more open spots, so he cannot be out of the playoffs at all. But they can still dock him money, but at the same time. His grandfather's RCR. And that's another thing. I think the only only logical way to possibly get a point across for Dylan here is to suspend him. You look at what happened with um, Bubba Wallace and Kyle Larson a few couple of years ago at, I think it was Kansas, when Bubba hooked Carson. No, Las Vegas. Or was it Las Vegas. Vegas? Bubba hooked uh, Larson into the wall. He got suspended for that. Um, and the same, it's kind of the same thing here. And so I think suspending Dylan is going to be the only way to do it. But again, he's already in the playoffs. It's not going to matter. Even if he misses a race, if you suspend him for a playoff race, that would work. But I don't think they, I don't think they do that. I think they would suspend him for Michigan if they were going to do any of them. So. I mean, if they do suspend Austin Dylan, I mean, I feel like. It would be funny to see Kyle Busch in the number three car. They wouldn't do that though because he he's still being the eight. I know, but he's still fighting for a playoff spot. He's still fighting for a win. Um, but yeah, uh, it's not. I don't know. I mean, it's like they're probably going to do. They're going to do something. Joey Logano is also probably going to get penalized because of his incident on pit road, which I don't like. I think he was he supposed to do walk out on the track and punch his punch him in the face, punch Dylan in the face while he's holding his infant baby. Like, what the fuck do you want him to do? Of course, he's going to retaliate. You know, it, it's it, when something like that happens, you have to expect that there's going to be retaliation. Nobody got hurt. And, you know, it's not something you want to happen, but I think it's a very re- regular reaction to what happened. I, like... I don't think it was the burnout that they would suspend him for. Um, I, w- I looked on uh, a YouTube short, and I guess when he did the burnout, when he was doing the burnout near uh, Austin Dillon's area, I guess his kid and his wife were right there. Uh, Austin Dillon's kid and wife were right there about to pass, and he almost just hit them. And that's awesome. Austin Dillon was pissed when he heard about that. So I'll have to send you the video because that's some crazy shit. That is pretty crazy. Um, but I think that's what they were suspended for, not the oh, burnout. I don't think they're going to suspend him, but they'll definitely find him. For it, but anyway, um, that was that. I mean, also Denny Hamlin got hurt; he hurt his shoulder. So we'll have to see if that happens. He because of the impact with the wall. So we'll have to see if anything comes from that. Um, but I mean, there's not really. I mean, there's not really anything else we could say about it. I mean, you can have your whatever your opinion you want on it. Um. Dylan was just going hard for the win, and that's what happens. Like, it's not – Logano and Hamlin fans can bitch all they want. It's it's what it is. And, you know, 
I guarantee you if I was in Austin Dillon's position, I would have probably done something similar. Or, And I'm sure if Joey Logano or Denny Hamlin were in his position, they would have done something similar for the win too. You know, and not just, you know, you, f- you swap the cars around. You put Denny Hamlin in a position where he needs to win to get in the playoffs. He does that. Joey Logano, he needs a win to get in the playoffs. He would have done that same thing. I guarantee you. Hell, Joey Logano did it when he didn't need to win to get into the next round of the playoffs eight, nine years ago with Kansas. Like Joey Logano also did that to William Byron at Darlington, too. And, you know, we had that same discussion about it. If you guys want to go watch it, go watch it. But, like, it'll be a far distance. But, like, you know, yeah. People. Joey Gano fans and Denny Hamlin fans are going to argue about it, but, I mean, like we said, they, they would have done the same thing. Right. Honestly. So, something will come out of it. We'll uh, we'll see what it's all about, but we're recording this Tuesday. Tuesday was the day they're supposed to make the announcement. There hasn't been an announcement made yet, but we'll talk about it next week. Anyway. It is time. Uh, what was I going to say? Anyway, that was Richmond. Um, let's not let the finish distract us from how boring the race was, but let's also say that the option tires were good, and um, <laughs> we'll just uh, have to move on. And I cannot. Well, we'll talk about that later. Let's just pull Richmond in the <laughs> snow. All right, so. Let's get some silly season news out of the way from the last couple of weeks. Um, first off, this is going to be some old news, by the way, getting some of the newer stuff. Uh, first off, from Legacy Motor Club, they've been in the news a good amount over the last couple of weeks because uh, Jason Burnett and a lot of the other 84 team members were fired, um, which is not good, seeing that they're trying to run the 84 more races this season. When you fire a lot of their permanent team members, what do you do? Um, so that, that that team's turning into a complete shit show, and that really sucks. So, Jimmy Johnson, whatever you're doing down there, you might you might you might have to sell your stake in the team and bow out so that we can just uh, go back to Richard Petty Motorsports or hell, Richard Petty, you can retire and sell the team with you or something. I don't know. It might be going to that point. We're just saying. I hate Jimmy Johnson. I hate his team. The only person I like in Legacy Motorsports is Richard Petty. That's it. Um. So that was that. There was also an update posted about Auto Club, um, and its uh, revitalization. Let me see if I can find some pictures. From its revitalization. Um, can't find I'm anything. Tired. I can't find anything about it. I don't know why the fuck. Where the, what the fuck? Uh, well, apparently a crane fell on the construction site, so that's awesome. It also doesn't seem like it'll be ready by 2025, so that's awesome. Uh, so that's great. But it is well underway. They've done lots of work on it, so it does seem like it's going to happen in some form. Um, is, is what I was able to find when I originally looked it up. So that's good. That's good. At least it's going to be happening again. Um, but we'll still have to get more updates in the future, so... Um, and then out of track house as well. Um, oh, by the way, the playoff grid got big fucked up. Speaking of track house, um, with Dylan's win, Dylan's in. He also was in the uh, New Year's Eve spectacular again. Uh, so he's the 18th driver to get into that. He's also the 15th, no, not 15th winner. What the fuck am I talking about? Um, shit. Just spilled water on me. Anyway. Um, with, with Dylan's win, he, Truex went down from like a hundred and a hundred something points to the good down to 78 points to the good. Also with his last place finish, 
Ross Chastain got moved below the cut line. So did Chris Buescher. Uh, Bubba Wallace is barely above the cut line. And Ty Gibbs is also now in some trouble as well. He's only like 16 or 17 points to the good. So <laughs> it's going to be a tight race. It's about, it's like a four. I, I still think Truex is okay as long as he runs pretty well over the next few weeks. Right. But Gibbs, Wallace, Busher, and Chastain are the ones really fighting for that last uh, couple of spots. So it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. But that's not why I was. Anyways, um, there's been other rumors going around. There was a big rumor that around that Pitbull was planning on selling his stake of Trackhouse. He denied this, though. He came out and denied it. Um, but there was a big rumor that that was going to happen. Um, uh, it was also announced that teams can start now start using lifters for flat tires. So when a tire goes down or something and they spin out, they don't have to get towed and pretty much be out of the race completely. They can just now use the lifters. Two. They can now use the lifters and be fine, so that's good. Maybe just put the inner liners back in. I don't know. I feel like that would have been a better situation, seeing with all the tire issues still going on. Um, Andretti Autosport also came out and said that they were interested in a cup team. Very interested, in fact. That is still they're still developing that. That is still in the works, but. That would be very interesting to see. Very they suck at that. They suck at Indy. Hmm. I'd be interested to see if they would make a run at it. I don't know how well they would be at it, but it'd be cool. Maybe they can bring over some of their sponsors. Um, big, big news. Uh, Juan Pablo Montoya's back, baby. Get the protect, jet dryer. Protect the jet dryers. Yes. Protect them at all costs. Juan Pablo Montoya <laughs> is dry. back. Jet dryer Montoya. Let's go, baby. Juan Montoya is back in NASCAR. He will be at least um, at Watkins Glen. He's going to be with Twenty Three Eleven Racing, driving their fifty car. So uh, he'll be. It'll be his first race back since twenty fourteen. So it's been a long time for him. So we'll hope, hopefully, he uh, can be competitive. Um, another crazy thing: Brazil is interested in hosting the Clash in 2026. Um, yeah. So this was a big rumor that has been picking up some steam as they look to look at other places besides besides um, LA or Mexico uh, for the clash. Brazil Just do this. Canada! Oh my gosh! Well, you can't do Canada because it's in the wintertime and they don't have an indoor track to race at, so... But they can build one. They're not going to build one. Uh, that's Canada. But they can. They can, but I don't think they will. But they could. They could, but I don't know. <laughs> um, so that's interesting. It's not confirmed yet, but they seem to be one of the front runners as at the moment. I don't even know what facilities they have to host a clash. I don't know how, how like feasible that would be to host the clash. They would just use the Formula One. But okay, I guess that's something we can look into. Also, another NASCAR Netflix documentary has been approved uh, for this year's playoffs to go over this year's playoffs. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this time it will have Chase Elliott in it. So I think that's why they approved it, uh, because I think they really were bad that he did not make the playoffs last year and could not use him very much. So I think that that was a big reason to it. But there, that was not stated, though. There's a lot of controversy because a lot of drivers are saying that they won't be in it they're saying no to being in it completely so we'll see how that really develops out but it has been approved so hopefully things go well for it um some sad news as well um roy hendrick passed away at age 70 um rest in peace roy Uh, Travis Peterson was named the crew chief for Mike McDowell starting in 2025. You know, Mike McDowell's making his move over to Spire, so Travis Peterson will be going with him. 
Um, another crazy one, Bristol Motor Speedway is going to be hosting an MLB game between the Cincinnati Reds and the Atlanta Braves in 2025. Um, so... As you guys know, they hosted a football game between Tennessee and Virginia Tech back in 2016. So this is not their first time hosting non-racing, I guess, sporting events. But a baseball game? A baseball game. What the fuck? Um, so that'll be interesting. I don't even know what how they're going to do that. Well, like a football field, right? They could just stick it in the infield, and it was like big, and it's, but you could see it, everything going on. But like baseball, baseball, how do you expect that to work? So that's going to be interesting. What's Sorry. next, soccer? Yeah, probably. Uh, <clears throat> so that'll be interesting. MLB said that they wanted to try and break their attendance record. So, but you, but you, but you have the Cincinnati Reds, so. Good luck with that. Uh, and you have the Atlanta Braves, so also good luck with that. The Atlanta Braves, though, are, you know, they're a good team, so they'll at least bring out some people. When oh, The Reds kind of suck ass. Who the fuck's going to go see a Reds game? At, ugh. I would. Pete Rose and his cocaine's there. True. True. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> No, there's been no further details on it so far, but, um, yeah, that's going to be pretty wild. Um, Connor Zilich is going to be going up to the Xfinity Series next year as well for Junior Motorsports. Um, so that's going to be awesome to see him up there. He's been uh, running really, really well. Um, so hopefully he can uh, continue that good streak. Um, then out of Toyota, Davis Wilson their president is uh, retiring. Here's a surprise. Another Gibbs guy is going in. Tyler Gibbs is going to be moving into the president role at Toyota. Woo! Shocker, shocker, shocker. So that's happening. Um, also, NASCAR is now going to... No, is no longer going to dictate when teams can change wet weather tires when they are being used um this has been a big point of controversy for the last few races that have been ran in the rain richmond in the spring new hampshire as of recent no longer will they dictate you can put on slicks you can put on the rain tires you can change them whenever you want no longer that's going to be an issue so good job nascar you did something good um, by just letting them do what they want to do and adding extra strategy involved. So, a um, couple contract extensions as well. Daniel Suarez is getting an extension with Trackhouse through 2025. And Eric Jones is getting extended with Legacy Motor Club through 2026. So, um, those were both uh, announced. Then the last piece of news that I really have... For this, um, Kyle Busch came out and said that he got injured in his wreck at Indy, which we did not know uh, until like right before the cup race, that during that wreck he injured his wrist because of the impact in the wall, and he said that he would have had to miss races had it not been the Olympic break. So, And um, with that hurt wrist, he was able to weasel his way into, a, I think, a 12th place finish. Um, which is one of his better finishes of the season, especially seeing how things have gone for him so far. Um, and so what that, you're saying is he needs to hurt himself more. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. Um, but that's really all the news uh, that I had. Um... I will, how about we talk about, I'm not going to talk about all the other stuff that I got to talk about, but we'll talk about a couple of them. Um, because you went to Crystal Speedway back in, I don't know when you went, a while ago. I think it was last month. But we, me and, I'm we, last month. me and Ann went, um, recently, uh, last week. Hence why I couldn't watch the truck race. We were at that race. So, 
this is a new track for us, a new dirt track, and um, it was fun. It was fun. I gotta say, it was it was a lot of fun to be there. Um, good racing all throughout. Um, I definitely like the environment that they have at Crystal. There's, it feels like you know, there's a lot of good facilities. There's the store, which was cool. I got, we got the one of the pins that you have. We didn't get, they didn't have both of them. They had the one that said Crystal Speedway on it. Yeah, they had that one. Um, we got that one. So that was cool. Um, but my God, they're so long, dude. The racing started at six. So we were there at 6 um, for the first races. It was the kid races, and they did the kid races and stuff. Got that over with. Then, then did the big car races. The, and during the big car races, there were three red flags. One for a crash, and then one for a rain delay, and then one for another crash. Good God. First one, I mean, like, with the rain, I thought they, they did a really good job, though, at like saving the track so that they could get the rest of the races in um because it took place during the second feature the modified feature which they had to call four laps short of the finish just because they didn't want to brush everybody back out there for four laps um which i thought was smart but um they did a really good job at making sure that they got the crews out there as necessary and were able to um be informative with the fans so that we knew okay not gonna race oh looks like we can race okay stick around and whatnot um so i thought they did a really really good job with that and i talk about that in the review of the track which uh, <clears throat> will be coming up soon so you can uh expect to see that um but a lot of good stuff there so i was very very i was very very happy with with that plus the racing was good i thought the racing was pretty good um so. I'm telling you right now, Crystal Motor Speedway. When you, when Tyler and I say that there ha, there's a lot of people there, they are always packed every single time they come out. No matter what the uh, thing is, they don't even they don't have night of destructions because you no, know, it's a short track. But you know. I think last month I went to the uh, which is a major series in like the circuit of dirt. So I mean it's a good place and it was really fun and if you get up close you'll probably get dirt in your face. So bring glasses. We didn't get any dirt on us, which was surprising. Well, I mean, we stepped in some mud because the dirt gets tracked all over the pavement outside the track. But, like, we didn't get sprayed with dirt like we did I-96 Speedway. I also didn't think, I also didn't get a burger. You, I didn't do that because I didn't feel like it. Um, so, I don't know. You didn't feel like you didn't feel like grabbing the burger from the uh, grill? Yeah. I didn't, after I didn't, you got your... I didn't feel like doing that. Easy and Another thing I want to ask was about the entrance to the track, like the gate to get in. Was there like a big open gate, or did you have to go in between like some buildings to like get into the speedway? How did how did that work? What do you mean? Because when we went, right, they had this big gate, but it was blocked. Um, it was locked up, and so the way you would get in and out of the track, everybody had to go in this like little time in between like two little buildings, like these two little ticket booth buildings. It, I guarantee it was not like more than this wide. So, yeah, that's the entrance. Why the fuck? It is so small. That's the, that's the main entrance. The one that has the fence is the garage area. Hmm. But you have to pay extra to get the garage. That's what's wrong. So. That's just really weird. Because during the rain delay, everybody left the track because it was, you know, pouring rain. And it got really congested there. And it was just like, what if there was like a fire and you needed to leave? Like, what the fuck? That would be... Ah, you guys will be fine. The smoke will clear up. I could just imagine Tyler on fire just like drinking a pot of coffee. This is fine. I feel no pain. <laughs> I'm dead inside. Anyway. That's okay, um... I am too. Overall, though, Crystal Speedway was fun. Uh, had a lot of fun there. Um, 
Hopefully next time I go, it won't be raining. So it wasn't even supposed to rain. Just remember that, guys. It was made in 1952. It wasn't even supposed to rain. And it did three times. Two times it didn't call cautions, though. It was just late sprinkles. One time was the big rain. Anyway. Um, the other things I think I'll talk about. Um, the other things I'll talk, talk about probably next episode. Um, so you can stay tuned for that. But I don't know if you, unless you got any other news to talk about. I don't know. No. No. Nothing really. Let's do it. The next race up on our schedule is MIS. And we're going to both be there. Heck yeah. We're going to both be there. Um, are you vlogging? Probably not. No, I'm not going to vlog either. I will probably film at least one short, though, while I'm there. So... I plan on doing yeah, that. I might, I might do that if I meet you. I'll be like, "Hey, yo, what up? It's Kyle." <laughs> True. Um, the weather looks good as of right now, though that is subject to change, as it always is at MIS. So, like yesterday, I saw it said forty percent chance of rain. Then today, right now, I just checked it, cloudy, seventy degrees. So again. Michigan is kind of bipolar. We they don't it doesn't know when it wants to rain, when it doesn't want to rain. Um, Michigan weather can you uh, do one thing and that's uh at least be cloudy. Okay, don't don't bring the rain with you. Just be cloudy. Okay, because then I won't have to have a sunburn. The thing with the Michigan race is it's always either a hundred degrees or it's raining. Right now, it doesn't say either is going to happen, but you know, some one of those things is probably going to happen, and I am... <sighs> anyway, um, this is also going to be a great race to go to because we're coming off of the Austin Dillon finish situation with all of that stuff still very fresh in the drivers' and fans' minds. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for some payback. I'm ready for some action. I'm ready for this. This is going to be some sweet stuff. And so I'm pretty excited about that. Knowing that and getting ready to uh, hopefully see some good stuff. I hope I, I hope Logano, I think Logano seems like he's always a driver that like gets that it does like fan interviews before the race. Um, at least he has been the last couple times have been to MIS. So I hope that'd be really cool if he was like one of them because then everybody's gonna ask about the the finish, or even like Austin Dillon might be one. I don't think Denny Hamlin. Will. They have a Chevy, they have a Chevy booth, Ford booth, and Toyota booth. So, so I'm hope I'm hoping that one of those three drivers is one of the ones that are gonna get interviewed. They might decline it. We don't know, but we'll see. So I think for this one, um, I think not only should we pick our own drivers, um, but pick the um, Chevy, Ford, Toyota on who they think is going to, well, win the trophy, the manufacturer trophy. Because only at Michigan is the manufacturer trophy there. It's always been to a Ford. Okay, well, I mean, like, it's the driver we pick is also going to be the manufacturer we pick, so. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, or you could pick, you could pick, like, Chase Elliott, and then you could say Ford. How the fuck would that work? So then you would have both, two, two out of the three chances. True. True, 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 actually. Um, fuck, I don't know who I'm going to pick. It's kind of blurry. I'm probably, I mean, I can't go against Ford in this race because of the fact that they've won so many straight races there. Um, but who to pick? Who to pick? Who to pick? 
I'm going to go with Michigan's own Brad Keselowski to get the win for RFK. Um, I would not be mad with that win. I really wouldn't. Um, never seen him win before in person, so that would be really fun to see him win. And um, get some good momentum for him for the playoffs, because he's already in the playoffs. But cool to see him get some momentum. Yeah, I mean, why not? I think a Chevy is going to win it. Um, and, well, I wore this for one reason, one reason only. Chase Elliott, even though last time I chose Chase Elliott to win at Michigan, he spun out and turned one and two, and my dad laughed at me while Kyle Busch went by him. So, I'm going Chase Elliott. Okay. I don't know. It's going to be fun. I'm excited um, to get back to the race. I'm hoping it's going to be a fun time. I'm going to go back to the tents, see if I can get any cool die gas. I'm going to see if I can uh, see what the haulers have to haulers have to offer i'm gonna see some uh some hopefully some fun racing i mean michigan's never the most exciting track but i think it'll put on a better product than what we saw last sunday so um if it doesn't i'll be sorely disappointed um and i will be very very pissed if we don't see any payback so because it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a lot of fun and i guarantee you it's gonna be some fun did i not say it's gonna be some fun yet anyway um that's going to do it, though, for this ep- this week's episode of the Talking NASCAR podcast, um, episode number 89. Next week, we will talk about whatever the hell goes down at, M- at uh, MIS this weekend. Um, I will give my thoughts. Hopefully, I'll try and work through some of those topics. Talk about the new game I played. I'm going to talk about Days of Thunder. And I'm going to... Uh, I forgot what the third thing was. Uh, uh, that might have been it. Uh... Talk about whatever Michigan. The, whatever the other thing was. So, but until then, uh, if you want to be a guest, though, on the Talking NASCAR podcast, all you got to do is join the Pringle Center Company Discord. Link is in the description down below. Request the Talking NASCAR role from both me or Hitmaster. We'll work time to get you on and talk some NASCAR. So, it should be a lot of fun. Um, but until next time, guys, stay tuned for much more amazing content from both me and Hitmaster. Go check him out as well. And until next time, We'll see you guys later. Goodbye.